What if I told you the best player on the best team in League of Legends history wasn't Faker? 2015 SK Telecom is by and large considered to be the greatest league roster ever assembled. They did things we rarely see in sports at a time when they had every obstacle in their way. But possibly the most shocking thing about this team was that their superstar mid lane god that everyone knows and loves wasn't the one who carried them to glory. It was their top laner, a player who was completely ordinary in many ways, but who was called on to save his country in their darkest hour. This is the story of Marin. This video is once again brought to you by Surfshark VPN. VPN sponsors are all over YouTube nowadays, so most of us likely know what they already do at this point. Using a VPN on unsecure websites can prevent your IP address from being leaked. VPNs can be used to spoof your location to access a region locked content, letting you see movies, shows, or anime that you otherwise wouldn't have access to. And VPNs encrypt all the data you send online, preventing your ISP or any other peeping toms from seeing what you're doing, meaning you can avoid things like having an ISP throttle your internet based on what sites you visit, plus a whole lot more. I do honestly believe though, of all the VPN choices you have out there, Surfshark is the best option available, and I'm really happy they've sponsored our channel for such a long time. Using Surfshark gives you all sorts of features no other provider has, like being able to use their service on an unlimited number of devices. They have all sorts of other bonus programs and features as well, and if you use the link in the description down below and sign up along with the code GBay99 at checkout, you'll get 83% off your purchase plus three months of their service free, all while supporting our content and our channel. So thanks again to Surfshark for the continued support. Now back to the documentary. At the end of 2014, the nation of South Korea began experiencing one of the worst things that can happen to a country all their best League of Legends players were leaving. The competitive League of Legends scene has always had an interesting relationship with the region of Korea ever since its early formative days. Back in Season 1, there was no official Korean server, which meant any Korean player who wanted to pick up League had to do so with 150 ping playing on the North American servers a hemisphere away. This led to a lot of contempt for Koreans as they quickly became known as untalented one-tricks who could only main cheesy, simple champions like Singed or Shaco. With Korean players, it's really specific because you always have 150 ping, you don't speak English, and you play a lot of Shaco. And that's how you can tell you're playing with a Korean? Yeah. In Season 2, when Korea was finally given its own dedicated server, things were looking up for the region, but many still believed the rest of the world would always prevail against them. Korea was the last of the five main regions to be given servers, leading to an infamous comment when the North American AD carry player Doublelift said, And these guys are going to spend every day playing League of Legends. Like, we've already been doing that for like two years, or like a year, or whatever. <laughs> so like, they're, they're going to be a year behind forever. No matter what, like, they're going to be a year behind. But by the end of Season 2, Korea had come to dominate the competitive landscape for a league, regularly beating the presumptive best teams in the world. Going into the Season 2 World Championship, they were the favorites to take their first title, which got a lot of people rooting against them and cheering on TPA, who managed to just narrowly upset them in Grand Finals. In many ways, Korea was never given a fair shake in the League of Legends scene. The stereotype of the mythically great Korean gamer led to a sort of judgment from others. Koreans were either not as good as their hype suggested they were, or they were the clear dominant favorites that everyone should root against to cause an upset, people started rooting against them before they even won a single world championship. It wasn't until Seasons 3 and 4 where we would see Korea take home titles with SK Telecom T1K and Samsung Galaxy White winning their first Worlds. Finally, it was no longer just rumblings of how good Koreans theoretically were, now was the time for them to finally shine in the limelight, but in a cruel twist of fate, this was the moment when it all came crumbling down. At the end of Season 4, in the 2014 offseason, foreign teams from other regions began trying to poach Korean players. As successful as Korean teams had been up until this point, they weren't that financially well off. Korea is still a relatively small country and a small market when massive superpowers like China and North America came by offering their best stars millions of dollars to play overseas. Most local teams couldn't compete. Samsung Galaxy White, who were coming off winning the most recent World Championship, 
Championship saw each and every one of their players leave to go and play for various Chinese organizations. In fact, if you just look at the top three placing teams from Korea's most recent split, of the 15 players on those rosters, 11 of them left to go and play overseas the following year. This event was later called the Great Korean Exodus and was cruelly ironic. The exact moment when Korea was finally given respect for how talented they were, everyone immediately started taking advantage of them. Heading into 2015, there was serious doubt about how good the region was anymore. Some local teams were able to hold on to a few stars, but the vast majority of their talent left in the Exodus, making them weaker than they had ever been. The only way Korea would still be able to challenge for another world title would be if young, unproven amateurs who weren't good enough to get overseas offers could step up and fill the holes left behind by the old guard. But thankfully, a few players were up to the task. Chan Kyung Hwan, otherwise known as Marin, first got his start in competitive gaming with a Warcraft 3 custom map called Chaos Clan Battles. Otherwise known as CCB or simply Chaos, this was a Dota variant that became the first widely successful MOBA style game in Korea. It had a variety of tweaks from the original Dota formula that it was inspired from, like for instance you might be able to tell the map is flipped the other direction for some reason, but this was the Dota variant that caught on more than any other in South Korea. Shortly after its rise in popularity, there were a number of tournaments formed to see who the best CCB players of the nation were, the biggest and most prestigious event being a seasonal tournament hosted by Nice Game TV. Nice Game is one of the many streaming services in Korea and put on one to two tournaments for chaos every year that became the scene's de facto world championship. Oddly enough, CCB tournaments weren't really attended by esports organizations like what you might imagine today, but rather were popular by in-game clans. These clans weren't very robust most of the time, they were normally just groups of players who came together in the Battle.net client to form a community. Sizes of them ranged from anywhere between 10 and 100 players, but even with their rudimentary structure, things became pretty competitive when it came to who a clan chose to represent them in official CCB tournaments. One of the biggest and most respected clans in Korean chaos was a guild who went by the name ROMG. This team had failed to win any of the first five majors in CCB, which gradually began encouraging more selective requirements for who they allowed to join and who started for their team. To put in perspective how competitive this became, the future League of Legends coach Koma joined the clan at some point early on, but rarely got to play in events and never managed to come that close to winning any of the tournaments he competed in. Keep that in mind when I tell you Marin joined ROMG in Season 6. He was then immediately dubbed a starter as the team's main carry in-game and dragged his new clan to their first ever CCB title. Marin's play for ROMG was so impressive, he was awarded MVP of CCB6. Winning a world title in anything is impressive enough, but to earn an MVP award as well really speaks volumes to your talent. For Marin to earn both of these accolades in the very first competitive tournament he ever played in suggested that he had a bright future ahead. He kept playing CCB for a while, going on to carry ROMG to second place finishes in the 12th and 14th seasons, but Marin would never manage to win another title in the game. The reason he failed to capture a second championship wasn't for any sort of lack of talent, but rather Rather, it was likely because Marin was a bit of a rager. Like many MOBA players, Marin had difficulty controlling his temper in game and was often seen getting frustrated online. He actually caused a few scandals in the CCB community by lashing out publicly at teammates and opponents in game. Nothing he said was really horrible or anything, but it was minor news that one of the best CCB players out there got so upset and angry over the game like any other player. If I were to try and make a modern day comparison, I would say Marin was a bit like like a Korean version of Tyler1, someone who loved the game he played and was super talented at it, but because he took it so seriously, his emotions could get the better of him sometimes. Years after CCB's rise in popularity, League of Legends would finally be released in the country, giving the nation its first standalone MOBA title with dedicated servers. Like many other CCB players, Marin decided to switch over to League the year it was released, seeing how far he could push his talents in this new title. 
It turned out he could go pretty far as in his very first ranked season, Marin would climb all the way up the ladder reaching rank four maining top lane, and in future seasons, he would regularly get rank one. Marin performed so well in solo queue, in fact, that he eventually earned a tryout for the esports organization SK Telecom T1 and joined them in mid-2013. That, of course, was the year SKT went on to win their first ever world championship, and when Marin joined them, they already had a full lineup on their best roster, so the team decided to slide him into their sister team on SK Telecom T1S. Here, Marn would be playing alongside Horo, Easy Hoon, Bang, and Wolf, which was still a very talented lineup and had loads of potential for success, but sadly, this roster would perform pretty poorly throughout most of its run, partially because of Marin. It turned out that Professional League of Legends was a bit different than Pro CCB, and there were some difficulties that came in adjusting to the new environment. Marin wanted to be the main carry for his team, like he had always been back in his chaos days, but that could be a bit difficult for a top laner in League of Legends. For him to succeed, playing with an aggressive, proactive carry mindset, Marin kind of needed his jungler to always be on the top side of the map when he was going aggressive. That way, if anyone ever tried to punish him going aggressive with a gank, then he would have support nearby to prevent him from ever getting outnumbered. But his jungler on this roster, Horo, could never quite play the way Marin needed. Horo was a somewhat weaker jungler overall and needed to spend time farming his camps, preventing counter jungling, and couldn't reliably always be topside whenever Marin needed him. That of course meant that Marin would die pretty frequently from ganks when he was trying to press advantages, getting set behind afterwards, and unable to get back into a game. His talent was still there, we saw flashes of Marin's carry potential frequently and often, but SKT1S could never reliably compete for a title because of some of this instability within the roster. It must have been pretty frustrating, all the talent on this team ending with all these poor placements, but it might have been a blessing in disguise. Right when Marin and T1S were at their lowest was when the Korean exodus happened. That meant that Marin wasn't given a massive offer to play overseas, but impact on SKT's main roster was. As he left to go and play in North America, Marin was promoted to the starting lineup alongside the superstar jungler Bangi and the legendary mid laner Faker. Now, Marin had a whole new level of opportunity ahead of him, and he made the most of it. We just didn't know it yet. And there you go, 20 that stack rumble will end this game. Marin absolutely dominating on this rumble pickup. In the 2015 spring preseason, SK Telecom crushed everyone they faced, getting first place in the standings. Korean preseasons weren't ever more than just a series of exhibitions, but even so, this SKT roster looked so dominant, they might be better than their 2013 World Championship lineup, and a large part of that was because of Marin. He gave SKT a solo lane carry threat opposite Faker that the team had never seen before. Imagine Prime Hotshot GG Nidalee or Frog and Anivia play, that was the kind of lane dominance Marin had, except he could play three different champions at that level, becoming one-trick levels of insane with Gnar, Maokai, and Rumble. I don't know if it was because of the new lineup, or maybe he felt like he had some sort of duty to prove Korea was still the best region post-Exodus, but whatever it was, Marin was playing like a star the World of League rarely gets to see. He would have likely been dubbed the best top laner in Korea immediately if it wasn't for... The exact moment Marin got his call up for SKT's main roster, a new top lane force emerged in Korea, Smeb, the leader of the GE Tigers. If you're unfamiliar with Smeb, he's often cited as the greatest top laner of all time. The best top laner in the world, Smeb, takes over the team fight, solo winning it for them. As good as SKT were early on in that spring split, they dropped a few sets here and there that might have been because their management began a very weird habit of substituting out their starting lineup to experiment with roster swaps, but even so, a loss is a loss, and SKT did drop a few games on occasion. The GE Tigers, though, looked almost unbeatable by comparison. Every onlooker started getting excited to see when these two teams would meet head-to-head -head for the first time. The legendary organization 
modernization of SK Telecom going up against a bunch of new faces ready to topple the old guard. Halfway through the split in week six would be when they first butted heads. And these guys put on a show for the ages. SK Telecom may have to go for a Desperation Baron right here. Faker going to go ahead and knock her out. Goodbye, Faker. Yeah, Dr. Faker did that one. Goodbye, Bang. Solar Flare misses. Can he make it out? Uses that QSS. It's coming in from behind here. Bengi ults on to Prey right away. There's the follow-up. They blow up Prey almost oh immediately. My. Azir goes down, though. Kuro tearing people apart. Meanwhile, Pickaboo in trouble as well. Big Gnar ultimate comes in. There goes Marin. And after all said and done, the GE Tigers will come out of the first half of the season 7 and 0. Oh. The GE Tigers managed to win two games to one, and in doing so, solidified themselves as a new rival to SKT. Marin in particular had a somewhat rough series here going up against Smeb, developing a bit of a personal rivalry against him. Smeb, like Marin, was a carry-oriented top laner with the ability to take over a game all on his own, and when Smeb came out on top in this first head-to-head -head series, a few people began blaming Marin for the losses. Personally, I think that was a bit unfair, even if Marin made some mistakes here, he was still one of the best players on his team, and I believe that management on SKT knew it. Throughout the split, while SKT made all their weird experimental roster moves, they never once substituted Marin out of a game. He started every single match, likely because the team and its coaches knew how special he was. Maybe it was Koma, who was the head coach of SKT, and remembered how great he was from their CCB days together on ROMG, or maybe it was the carry potential that Marin suggested suggested in all the great proactive plays he made, but regardless of the reason, SKT's commitment to this top lane carry would prove to pay dividends almost immediately. Lantern, though, so at least no kills handed over. Oh, looks like Marin though, catching Duke, got the fear, got the kill. That's just a straight up 1v1 from Marin. He has no mana. That's why I said flash. Marin, 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 Marin! Giddy up, whoa! He's over the wall, and there's a kill! But the Death Timers say that SK Telecom are going to be able to take this game as they take down the second Nexus turret. And as close as that game was, in the end, SKT with a 2-0 and a perfect second half of the season. Incredible stuff going into the finals. After their loss to the GE Tigers, SKT wouldn't lose another set that spring split. They would go on to win their next seven series in a row heading into the playoffs, and of course, a huge portion of this success had to be credited to Marin. For being a random CCB kid drafted into SKT because all the other good players left the region for better opportunities, Marin was putting on a masterclass in top lane play that's worthy of study. In many ways, he was playing selfishly, always going aggressive to press leads, never leaving an inch for opponents to make comebacks happen, and snowballing early advantages into massive gold differences that nobody could come back from. But in other ways, he was also playing very selflessly, picking hybrid utility champions or even full-on tanks whenever SKT needed him to, and he was still finding ways to carry even then. The only thing holding Marin and SKT back from calling themselves the best at this point was their rivals, Smeb and the GE Tigers. In the final set of the spring regular season, SKT would go on to beat the GE Tigers two games to zero, but this set could be wiped away by Tigers fans is not that big of a deal. GE had done so well up until this point that they had already secured first place in the spring regular season standings, which seeded them directly into the grand finals of playoffs. For SKT to really reclaim their title as the top team in Korea, they would need to win that playoff split. After a close 3-2 victory over CJ Entis in the semifinals, they would make it to grand finals ready and willing to face off against GE. But right before finals began, one of the weirdest managerial decisions we've ever seen came through. The team's ace, Faker, wouldn't start a single match. SKT had complete faith that Marin would be the carry to lead them to a Korean title on his own, and he sure did them proud. There's the chilling smite, they're gonna slow him down, there's the stun. Smeb trying to fight for his life, but I think he's in trouble. Nice ultimate coming in from top. Boom goes the ice dynamite, I guess, in the moment. Kuro comes in, nice ult on the prey and Kuro. They're gonna get low. Tom comes up, a double kill for Easy Hoon. So SKT loses the dragon, but they're gonna take this team fight. Bang, doing so much damage. Goodbye, Smeb. Can Marn make it out? There's the Zonia's, he'll live. And he's 
bad one there, trying to knock him out. Nice lantern, Tom dodges it as well too. Uh -oh. And Lee could be in a little bit of trouble, manages to dodge the, dodge the knock up from Tom. And now it's KT chasing. Nice all time to Garou, they lock him down. Equalizer comes in, this box will in a little bit of trouble, but here comes Marin. Bang, uses that position for a to get in. On to Bray, here comes Easy Hoon. There's a stun though for Lee. Easy Hoon could be in trouble, gets low. Smab in the back lines, can take it out. That's another double. Smab joins as well. I don't know if they can end right here. They're gonna try Easy Hoon. Maybe they'll trouble. There's Equalizer. Ever Divide goes down. Marin gets that kill onto the support. A double kill for Marin. And now it will end. Smab getting low. Wolf still up. And there it is. The first Nexus turret down. The second Nexus turret down. A triple kill for Marin. And SKT with top with Easy Hoon takes the 3 0. GG. We'll see you at the Invitational. SKT proved once and for all that they were the top dogs in Korea. Marin finally got victory over his rival, and they were one step away from calling themselves the best team in the world, except there was one more hurdle to overcome. SKT still needed to prove themselves internationally. Their names wouldn't be written down in the history books until they won a major multi-region tournament, but there was a new international event right around the corner for them to fight for, the Mid-Season Invitational. Here in 2015, we had seen a couple of seasons of League where the only major international event was the World Championship at the end of every season, and seeing as there weren't even that many games played at Worlds each year, fans were getting pretty irritable and demanding that Riot set up a new event. Well, in 2015, Riot came up with such a new event, MSI. This fresh tournament would feature international competition between the spring split champions from all corners of the globe halfway through every season. Nowadays, MSI is one of the most prestigious events a person can win, but that 2015 event had some extra importance to it. Not only was it the first ever MSI to occur, but it was the first international event after the Korean exodus. Every main region at MSI actually featured rosters with Korean players who just left during the exodus, meaning all eyes were on SKT to see if they really were as good as they seemed, or if Korea was just a much weaker region than they had been before. It's gotta be tough to perform when the entire weight of a nation is on your backs, but this SKT roster managed to do exactly that at first. In the group stage, SKT went undefeated in five separate best of ones, giving them the number one seed to the small playoff bracket afterward, but it was there that things began to go awry. In semifinals, SK Telecom was pitted up against Fnatic, the champions coming from the EU LCS. Fnatic had a pretty poor group stage, going two and three in total, which meant everyone was completely caught off guard when Fnatic won two of the first four matches of this series, taking SKT to a decisive game five. We are going to game five! Fnatic take down SKT! It was rough going for a while, but SK Telecom would be able to pull themselves together, take that game five, and qualify for grand finals. Even so, this set must have certainly shooken them up a bit. In grand finals, they were matched up against Edward Gaming, the LPL champions who had two former Korean stars rostered alongside China's best local players. China traditionally had always been the second best region in the world behind Korea, meaning there was a real threat to SK Telecom here. This might be the moment when Korea Korea finally falls. Throughout this series, EDG managed to trade games back and forth with SKT, similarly to Fnatic, forcing a final game five. One match to decide which region was top dog and which team was now the best in the world. Have that setup here where with the wave beam pushing in the bottom lane, SKT should expect multiple members to be nearby, yet Marin is now teleporting in. Wolf is here to help for? him, it's 4v2. Oh, what timing here by EDG. Marin's going to go down to an ignite. They don't know Bengi's coming as well. How long do they stay for this? If Wolf can get some good passive shots down on different Nice members, shot by Wolf. That's going to be good kills. They get one for themselves now and a two for one. Bengi's going to be able to stave off any more. Several. They really want to fight. They just hit their spell shields to block Faker's damage. They are going to get in onto Wolf, though. Good kill coming from Def. They are still following with a bit of on the hunt pressure. Righteous Glory just wears off, and they go in. Koro's right in the middle with Ben from Maelstrom on. That's a huge on the wall. Damage, the soul shackle causing SKT to flash out every which way. EDG is all over SKT. Here's the last engage. EDG doesn't even see the turrets. Eyes on SKT. SK Telecom T1 are wiped. The Nexus turrets are going down. LPL's Edward Gaming are the 2015 
Mid-Season Invitational Champions! Now I can imagine you're probably asking yourself two questions at this point. The first being, what happened at MSI? Don't get me wrong, EDG and Fnatic are talented teams, but how did SKT look so weak against them by comparison? Was Korea really so much weaker post-Exodus? At one point, they looked so poor, a few onlookers straight up said that Faker should leave and go to China, that Marin and the rest of the team weren't world champion caliber players. Only SK Telecom themselves know exactly what went on at 2015 MSI, what sort of dynamics were at play amongst their team, but I have a hunch of what might have gone down. This was still a pretty new roster at their first ever international event. These players were still human, and Marin in particular was kind of battling the frustration that comes when playing League of Legends. In many ways, Marin is the embodiment of every League player. He loved this game, but I suspect he also hated it. Years later, future teams Marin played with spoke pretty openly about how frustrated he would get in-game. One team even said that they would just ignore any time he died in match, pretending to not notice, while praising him constantly if he ever got a kill. This wasn't because he was a bad player or a toxic guy or anything. He was just someone who put all his emotions into the game, and if a result ended poorly, he would tilt as we all do. It wouldn't surprise me if SKT broke down a bit at MSI from those early losses against Fnatic. They were still a new lineup playing under a lot of pressure, so I just kind of assumed they were caught off guard by some of this international play, dropping a few matches, and never calming down to collect themselves afterwards. The second question that you're probably asking yourself though is, how is this roster considered the greatest team of all time? I mentioned at the start of this documentary, 2015 SKT is considered the best, the most dominant team in League of Legends history. How can that be if they choked here? Sure, they won a Korean title, but they were clearly beatable up until this point. They lost to the GE Tigers before. What is it that made them so special? That's a good question. The answer is what happened next? Uh, bang. Oh, that's one of those, uh, Marin. Could get dove here, will get dove here. A lot of damage there coming in with the flash knockup. Marin doing a lot to Ixu. Oh, Marin with a play on to Ixu. Whoa, with the double kill. Marin here. Ooh. It's offside. Soul has his ultimate up, but Marin going to get knocked up by Jarvan. They're going head to head at the moment. There's the ignite. He kills catch, and then he just playful wow. tricksters out the one v two win. Contest the blue buff right here. Uh, TP advantage to SKT for a brief time. Well, Edmund Pulverize saw you and so far knocked up. Here comes Baker and Banky coming in. Zoning with the gravity shield. Banky doing a lot of to Banky. There's a nice equalizer. Oh! Whoa! What a shockwave! That is huge. SK Telecom gonna crush this team by Lira. And K. Marin just having an amazing game. No kidding. 8 0 and 2. 8 0 and 2 already on this Rumble. Going to be the end of this game at sub 30 minutes. A dominating win by SK Telecom. T1. In game two, Bang showing up on the vein, but holy hell, Marin looks good. A shot in a 2 0 for SK Telecom, and that's going to be a quick one in favor of SK and SK Telecom will win it. 2 0 in dominant. Two attacks, and that'll be the game. SK Telecom defeats the Goo Tigers 2 0. They extend their game win streak to 17. They extend their Best of three win streak to a shocking 20 here. I mean, SKT, the level to which they are playing League of Legends these days is absolutely mind-boggling. Wolf, Telecom, this is why these guys are on top of the league. They are going to exit the regular season with only one match loss. Impressive stuff from SK Telecom as usual. GG. SK Telecom T1 went on to finish the champion summer season, getting first place with a near-perfect record of 17 wins and one loss. In hindsight, we now know this was at a time when Korea featured many of its biggest stars and best players. There were a lot of hidden gems on teams here who slipped through the exodus that would go on to become legends of the game in their own right. KT Rolster was putting together one of the best rosters that organization ever had. Legends like Madlife on CJ Entis were still fighting for wins. Na Jin, Samsung Galaxy, and Jin Air still all had plenty of talented stars putting up a fight in their own right. And of course, Smeb and company now rebranded as the Ku Tai Tigers were one of the biggest and best teams that Korea ever saw. That was the competition SK Telecom had to play against, and they had a near-perfect split doing so.
Marin in particular was astounding for his team. He beat everyone he went up against, clutching matches whenever under the most pressure. He led the league in kills, CS per minute, gold per minute, gold share, and was only second in KDA and kill share amongst all top laners. He did everything except win MVP. MVP works a little bit oddly in Korea, and because of that, someday, the top laner for KT, Rolster, went on to win MVP. But Marin reminded everyone who the real best top laner of the the split was as he dismantled someday in a 3-0 sweep leading SKT to another Korean title in the 2015 summer playoffs. Turin, he's going for the next one, they're delaying it, and Bang is going to win champion summer for his team, SK Telecom, 3-0 in the spring season, 3-0 in the summer season, this is the year of SKT. In this summer split, Marin capped off an amazing year, getting insane win-loss records on all the champions he perfected. Across the entirety of 2015, he earned a 20 and Eight record on NAR whenever SKT needed a hybrid tank. He got a 20 and 7 record on Rumble if they ever needed an AP bruiser. And most impressively of all, he went 31 and 1 on Maokai if SKT ever asked him to play full tank. Think about that for a second. Think of how hard it is to go 31 and 1 on a champion in League of Legends. How hard that is to do even in solo queue in any 30 game stretch. And think how much harder it must be to do that against the literal best top laners in the history of League. SKT's performance was one for the ages. The only thing left for them to prove was that they were still the best in the world. There was just that one MSI that suggested maybe China had overtaken Korea after the exodus. Maybe SKT isn't that good and they'll do poorly when they have to go to Worlds, but I think SK Telecom knew they had that chip on their shoulder. SKT had just made it to Grand Finals of Worlds without dropping a single game. That alone would be an achievement worth celebrating, but we all know they weren't satisfied with just that. There was still one series left that they needed to overcome to write their names in the history books, and it was against their old rivals. Hasn't had finished vision of Bengi, so he sits behind Smet. Little action towards the bot side, the teleport coming in right now from Marin. His ultimate is up. They lay down the equalizer. Wolf should be able to get out of this one. Marin into the fight now. Kuro and Prey are the targets, and that's gonna be Kuro going down. SKT seemingly pulling this one back in their favor with just a few kills to the bot lane, and that's a double kill for Marin. Massive play. Yeah, there comes Faker. Really nice timing on that teleport. DP and ult as he makes his way out there. Getting a few stacks on the oh, oh, wait a minute. He's going to be in range a little bit more. Spams out those room prisons. That's the tower hitting. Marin trying to give him the time of day, but it's a hit from Faker. The teleport and flash. Hashtag worth. And right here, Tigers last stand. Two neighbors down. Here SKT comes. On the hunt. Goes in. That's going to be Hojin in a real sticky situation. He goes down a full three man NAR ultimate. That's going to be Smab down now. Eyes onto the AD carry, but the support hits. It's going to be Kuro out safe. Prey, however, has to run away from his base. SK Telecom looking to take down the final Nexus turrets. It does not look good for Kuro and his team. Ku Tigers are falling. SKT will be your first ever two-time world champions! SKT became the first team ever to repeat a world championship, and Marin carried them to it. He would be awarded the MVP of the whole event, winning his first world championship and his first MVP award ever since his old CCB title years and years ago. To date, he is the only top laner to ever win a world's MVP. This 2015 campaign might have cemented Marin as one of the greatest top laners in the history of League of Legends if it wasn't for what happened next. After the end of Season 5, in a cruel twist of fate, it was Korea's savior who would then leave the region, going off to China to join LGD. Marin signed what was reported as the biggest contract a player had ever gotten paid up until that point. Now honestly, I can't blame Marin for taking the money and heading off to China. With esports being what it is, players' careers are pretty dang short. It only makes sense to secure your financial future if the opportunity arises, cashing in on just how great your talents are when they're at their peak. But with this decision, Marin prevented himself from cementing a legacy as one of the all-time greats. 
Playing in China proved to be really difficult, since Marin's playstyle required pretty intimate synergy with his jungler, moving to a foreign country where his jungler spoke a different language from him turned out to be a major roadblock. Marin and LGD struggled quite a bit in the LPL because of some of these synergy problems, and I think he started getting a bit homesick as well. Marin later did an AMA on Reddit that revealed he missed Korea and the people he left behind there, namely his longtime girlfriend that he began dating some five years ago before his League of Legends career ever began. As he started struggling with his results, Marin started bouncing to a few different teams between China and Korea. At one point, he went on to play for the Afrika Freaks, but had additional attitude and frustration problems, unable to synergize with their jungler, resulting in him going back to China to play for top East sports for a little while. Before long, he'd retire in 2019 and seemingly has left the League of Legends esports scene for good, leaving us with a lot of questions. The first question, of course, is how do you evaluate his career? He was one of the greatest talents the game has ever seen and played like the best top laner of all time in that 2015 campaign, but he never caught that lightning in a bottle again. Many top laners in Korea today still cite him as one of the best players of all time, but it does seem like his issues with tilting kept him from multiple world titles. I don't think he's a bad person or anything because he raged. I think we can all probably relate to how this game can turn us into unpleasant people at times, not to mention, for every moment where Marin got upset in-game, there were just as many moments where he showed a much softer side. At the 2015 World Championship, when Marin was playing for SKT, there was a moment when SK just played their last group stage game, beating the Bangkok Titans. This was the Thai team that was one of the wild cards at that Worlds, and with this loss, they just went 0-6 in their group stage, unable to pick up a win, and were now about to be sent home. As heartbroken as they must have been, Marin showed them a little bit of kindness and told them to come up on stage and take a bow with SK. They earned it. Even if they didn't get a win, they played their hearts out. There's just one more question we're left wondering now. Is Marin happy with how things turned out? Honestly, with the talent that he had, I believe Marin could have won multiple world titles. He could have at least won more LCK titles or even a few LPL titles if he went to the right team. Normally, the types of hyper-competitive people who choose to chase world championships in games like this are always eager to keep chasing more. Marin spent most of his life trying to become the best in the world at one game or another. I don't know if he was satisfied with what he achieved or if he maybe wished he got a little bit more, but I do know there was one benefit of going back to Korea and retiring 